Today, my good people, we are doing a first impressions on some new products and some products that are new to me. Now, to be honest, over the last couple of weeks, there haven't been too many new products that have really been tickling my fancy, which I'm pretty happy about. I'm happy to just be shopping the stash and using what I have. However, there are a few new products that I am very excited about. Some products like the Patrick Ta new lip kits and blushes. You guys were sending me this, like I don't know how many DMs and comments I got about his orange lipstick and I had to, simply had to pick it up and put it to the test for you guys. And I wanted to give you an update on the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer because I officially have the, the shade that matches me. And I also wanted to do a little first impressions on the Oma Beauty foundation and concealer. I'm really excited about this. I was actually in Vancouver and Sam gave me these. So Sam, thank you so much for getting these in my hands faster than my order was able to make it into my hands. I have ordered a ton of the Oma Beauty products and I'm excited to do kind of a full brand overview on that. But until then, Sam, thank you so much for giving me these and I wanted to give you guys my first impression on these. So that's what we're doing today, you guys. A couple of quick products that I wanted to give you first impressions on. And if there are any new products that you think I missed and that I should be reviewing and I should be having in my hands, please let me know in the comments down below. And without further ado, let us dive in. So this is the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. This one is in the shade Fair Lady T2W, which is the, the warm section. I have ordered the shade that is more on the neutral end. I believe I ordered T2. In. And I have a feeling that that will match me better. I typically do have a more, more neutral undertone, but today we're going to be testing the warm version and using this. I actually love the description of this foundation. I love that when it's talking about the coverage, it says it has an adjustable coverage, which I thought was awesome. You can kind of use this with whatever application tool that you want, your fingers, a brush, a sponge, and then you can either shear it out or build it up to whatever coverage you want. So it's a really versatile foundation, says the description. And it also says that it has a soft matte, but hydrating finish. So I typically stick to things that are not so matte, but I do love love having matte foundations that are good for dry skin that do have that hydrating component for when I'm wanting to have a really long wearing finish on my skin. So I'm excited to give this a try. I'm going to put some pumps into, wow, it's so liquidy. I wanted to apply this with my beauty sponge. This is the Real Techniques beauty sponge. It's so funny. It's so funny. Wow. It's so liquidy, but like even just dipping in my sponge where it would normally just absorb all the product, it's actually leaving so much residue behind, which is, wow, wow, very promising. Also, I just had that giant sit there and that just fully erased that. That's magical. That's gorgeous. That's just so easy to apply. I forgot to mention that for a primer, I did put a layer of my MAC Gold Light Strobe Cream on beforehand. Sorry, I forgot to, forgot to mention that. Other than the fact that it is a bit warmer in undertone, I am very much looking forward to trying out the neutral undertone. I feel like that'll fit perfectly. This looks beautiful. It looks so beautiful and knowing that you can build it up and add more layers to add coverage to adjust it and customize it as you wish. Absolutely stunning. It still looks like my skin and did a really great job at just so nicely evening out the skin tone. Honestly, I don't even feel like I need to go in with too much more concealer just to test it out. This is the Stay Woke Concealer. This was in the shade T2. I want to try just putting a bit of this underneath my eyes. The description of this one is a really lightweight, full coverage, but skin-like finish, and it's supposed to help brighten up <laughs> those dark circles, which is what I want to do. Now I'm just going to take a little concealing brush and put that underneath the eyes and see if we can see if we can help out with the with the dark circles under there. I'll put a little bit on my chin just right here to try and brighten up that area and just around my nose. To be honest, I think the the foundation did such a good job of evening out my skin tone that the concealer was almost unnecessary, but I do think it really helped to brighten up that inner corner, inner eye area, and it didn't disturb any of the foundation underneath, so that's a great sign. I'll continue to play with these as time goes on as a first impression. This looks absolutely gorgeous. I'll continue to use it and let you know at a later date. I wanna move on to the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. It's summertime, baby, we gotta bronze up, and I was really excited, honestly, about 
the packaging of these when they launched. And previously I had mentioned that they sent me shade one, which was their fair shade, and it was super, super light. So they sent me a new shade. Thank you, Charlotte Tilbury. This one is number two, medium. Here is the shade in comparison to Benefit Hula. It's pretty much from here, like it looks exactly the same to Benefit Hula. So I'm gonna take this refer brush. This is the 05 brush. This is the brush I've been using lately, loving it for bronzer. And because this is a matte bronzer, I'm hoping that we can just use this as a contour and bronzer in one. So I'm taking that. Oh my God, I feel like I got powder in my mouth. <laughs> I've been using cream bronzer so much lately that this actually feels weird. Like the last few weeks, I've just been using the Fenty cream bronzers. I almost forgot how to put on a powder bronzer for a second there, holy moly. Yeah, the color's, the color's really nice. It's a lot more sheer than I was expecting, which sometimes it's annoying because sometimes I just want to slap on the bronzer and be done with it, but it's actually great because you're less likely to go overboard when you can build up the product. So for application, I have absolutely no problems with it. I honestly find my Benefit Hula to be a bit more pigmented, which I prefer because you guys know I love to be very heavy with my bronzing products. I went over a few layers with that and I really had to like pinch my brush and get in there to build up, <laughs> build the product up on my face. Uh, this would definitely be a purchase that I would make for the packaging alone just because it is so beautiful to look at. But in terms of formula difference, whether you're using the Benefit Hula, the Marc Jacobs matte bronzer, they're pretty much all gonna perform on the same level. Again, this one's a little bit lighter, a little bit more of a buildable formula. Those are my those are my thoughts on the bronzer. Now let's move on to the very new and exciting Patrick Ta blush duos. These are the double take cream and powder blush duos here. I picked up two shades of these. This one is She's So LA, which is a nude blush duo. And this one here is Do We Know Her? which it's so funny because in my screen right now, it looks much more orange. It did look more orange online, but in person it looks very pink. Like I'm looking at a very pink blush. I need to see this comparison right now. Next to the Tower 28 Golden Hour blush, it's much more pink, but by itself it was like, oh, it looks orange. Anyway, looks pink to me, but I'm very excited about this launch. I think it's very unique. I love that you're buying a blush and you're getting both the cream and powder version. I think it's brilliant. There's the little flap here to protect the cream blush from any powder fallout and any mixing and matching here. The packaging is perfect. No really wasted space here, which is great. And the mirror is actually a really nice size as well. So here are the two duos swatched side by side here. Here's the nude, here's the, what I'm calling pink. <laughs> and for the sake of what I wanna do with my lips later, I'm actually gonna use the, the nude blush. This one is She's So LA. And I wanna try the cream. The cream just felt so delightful and creamy and lovely. So I'm just gonna use the back of my beauty sponge and just stipple that on, stipple, poke, bounce it on. And maybe just, just for fun, we'll just go over top with the powder. It's a really pretty nude shade. It's much deeper uh, than the typical nude I'd go for but I actually love it. I just love that you get a two in one here. I think that's super fun. I love that he did that. I'm gonna take a little eyeshadow brush with this powder blush and just put that onto my eyes as well. It just looks like a shade that would be super lovely for the eyes too. <laughs> I actually love that shade so much for just a very simple everyday eyeshadow look. I'm gonna apply some highlighter the tops of the cheekbones, especially with this more matte finish on the foundation. I definitely don't want to skip highlighter here because I still like to be glowy. I don't ever like to be flat. This is the MAC Whisper of Guilt highlight. Put a little bit of that in the inner corners as well. Finish the eyes with some mascara. Okay, and finally, the new lip products from Patrick Ta. He came out with new shades of his Precision Lip Crayons, and this one's in the shade She's Not From Here. And then there's some matching lipsticks to go with it, which is very exciting. This is just, just the lipstick. And this is also called She's Not From Here. So these two match together. Very excited, looks to be like a very vibrant orange shade. I love the click mechanism he has for his lip 
liners. Now with bright lipsticks, I honestly don't normally use a lip liner, but I wanted to try it out today for science. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm like nervous to be using a bright <laughs> color. I'm usually so messy with my lip liner. I just put it on and rub it all over my lips. I feel like I need to be more specific with this placement. I found that terribly stressful. <laughs> The color looks nice so far. I'm finding it a little bit more pinky, honestly, than orange. We'll have to swatch them after to see for sure, but let's try the lipstick. I'm just taking a lip brush and fixing this up a bit. Okay, so overall, it looks really great. It's super even. It's quite a thick formula, like I can feel it on my lips, but it's not an uncomfortable matte feeling, which is very nice. And what's so funny is like on their Instagram, this shade shows very orange. In in the mirror, it looks more of like an orangey red to me. This has much more of a, of a pinky undertone and I just wanted to swatch it next to some other lipsticks just to show you what I mean. So here, this is MAC Morange, Morange. <laughs> This is the Hermes orange lipstick, and then this here is the Patrick Ta one. So it still has that orangey feeling, but it's just not as orange as I thought it was gonna be, I guess. Like if I were including this lipstick in my orangey swatch video, if you missed that, I'll link it here for you. I did a whole, a whole comparison on a whole bunch of orange lipsticks. This would have definitely fallen into the more of a pink category in that video. So I guess like it's a beautiful color, I would, in my collection put this into the red range even though online and when i was shopping for it i was expecting it to be a lot more orange give us this but amp up the clementine you know what i'm saying <laughs> all right guys so that completes this look that is everything for this video those are a few of my first impressions on some products that are new to me let me know your thoughts on the products that i used in the comments down below and let me know if there are any other products or any other brands that you want to see me test out here on the channel i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much as always for watching and i will see you all very soon for a new video bye